Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in my previous video, I have shown you all about remote sensing. So in my today's video, I will show you all the elements of remote sensing in full details. So let's get started. The elements of remote sensing. In my previous video, I have shown you all only the working process in remote sensing. Now I will show in details the elements of remote sensing. So there are seven elements in remote sensing and they are number A energy source or illumination, number B radiation and the atmosphere, number C interaction with the target, number D recording of energy by the sensor, number E transmission, reception and processing, number F interpretation and analysis, number G application. So the main natural energy source is our sun which produces its own light and heat that is also known as illumination. So in the first element, remote sensing needs energy source where our natural sunlight helps us. It illuminates the energy to the targeted area on our earth. While illumination, the energy comes in the forms of waves which is called as electromagnetic radiation and under electromagnetic energy or radiation, an electromagnetic spectrum is present with shorter wavelengths to longer wavelengths. Don't get so confused. Electromagnetic radiation is just the energy it passes through. Electromagnetic spectrum falls under electromagnetic radiation where wavelength and frequency are present. And in that electromagnetic spectrum, a table is present where I have shown in the image starting from gamma rays to radio and microwaves. It starts from shorter wavelengths to longer wavelengths. UV rays or ultraviolet rays are the most shorter wavelengths which are used for remote sensing purposes like it emits light to some earth materials like primarily rocks and minerals. Next our visible portion comes where we see with our naked eyes. The visible portion ranges from 0.4 to 0.7 micrometer. The longest visible wavelength is red and the shortest wavelength is violet. Blue, green and red are the primary colors or wavelengths of the visible spectrum. And lastly the radio waves and microwaves are the shortest wavelengths which helps for radio broadcasting. While the energy radiates to the target, the energy interacts with the atmosphere. While radiation, there are some particles and gases which affects the light and that is caused due to mechanisms of scattering and absorption. Now, what is scattering and absorption? Scattering occurs when large molecules or particles present in the atmosphere interact with the energy and due to which it redirects the energy from its original path. Again in absorption, while energy radiates to the earth, it interacts with the atmosphere where ozone, carbon dioxide and water vapor absorbs the radiation. Ozone absorbs a harmful ultraviolet radiation from the sun, carbon dioxide absorbs infrared portion of the spectrum and Water vapor absorbs a long wave infrared portion including short wave microwave radiation. Those areas where these gases does not absorb are useful for remote sensors. These are called as atmospheric windows. Next, the energy which does not scatter or absorb, it interacts with the ground or the targeted area. Here also it interacts with the earth's surface in three ways. When the energy absorbs with the targeted area, then it is called as absorption. Then when the energy passes through the targeted area, it is called as transmission. When the energy redirects from the targeted area, it is called as reflection. Due to this interaction of energy with the earth's surface, the color of leaves, 
turn green in color, water are blue in color and so on. When the energy radiates from the target, a sensor is required to collect and record the electromagnetic energy. A sensor may be active or passive. Active sensors are those sensors where they have their own energy source for illumination. For an example, SAR, Synthetic Aperture Radar, Laser Fluoro Sensor, etc. Passive sensors are those which take the help of a natural energy source like the sun's energy for illumination. A sensor may be present in space which are satellites or on an aircraft or on a ground. These are the different platforms used in remote sensing as I have shown on the previous video. Satellite collects and records information of a big area such as a country or it can be the whole world. Aircrafts or from helicopters collects a little bit more detailed information from the satellites as helicopter are more closer than the satellites to the targeted area with a detailed image of that particular area. In ground-based sensors, they record a very detailed information with more closer to the ground in comparison to the other platforms, but it takes images of a very small area. When the sensor records and collects the information, the recorded data are sent back to a recording station. How it sends to the operating system? In case of a satellite sensor, the collected data are transmitted electronically. But in case of aircrafts and ground-based sensors, they retrieve the data once the aircrafts are landed on ground. The recorded data or the information from the sensor are transmitted to a ground operating station. Then the station receives the record data where the data are received in a raw digital format. Then the raw data are processed whether there are some distortions or not to the image and after all these things are processed. The data are then translated to a standardized format in a tape, disk or CD. The receiving station runs both by government agencies as well as commercial companies. There are a large number of applications in remote sensing. I have also explained this part in my previous video. Some of the applications are agriculture, forestry, geology, hydrology, land use and land cover and so on. Overall, remote sensing helps all the applications present in the world to monitor the specific information that they are taken for in specific locations while monitoring those locations they can be depict the past years and show the future years with that remote sensing it also helps the management authorities to save the next future so these are the seven elements of remote sensing so today we have learned about the elements present in remote sensing and in the next video, I will show you all what are latitudes and longitudes. So that's all for today and don't forget to hit the thumbs up and click the subscribe button. And till then, take care. Bye-bye.